right, what's going on guys? So we are on one of my local lakes here in South Florida. Just gonna be doing some pan fishing. I'm gonna be using my uh, Sancor Avid pan fish rod today. It's not an ultralight, this is a light power rod, uh, six feet, four inches, light power, fast action. It is late summer right now, and usually late summer down here in South Florida, there is a lot of uh, vegetation growth on a lot of these lakes, so a lot of algae, a lot of weeds. So I wanted to go with something that has a little bit more power than like my usual ultralights, just so if there's weeds and all this other stuff that I can still kind of get my jig head and my lure back on in. And if we do hook a fish that kind of dives into some of these lily pads or weeds or whatnot that I maybe even have a shot at pulling that fish through. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and throw the avid panfish around and let's see what we can get. Alrighty, so here is the lake we are going to be fishing. I already showed you the rod, the avid panfish. Let me show you the lure we're going to be throwing around at least to start. So it's a 132nd ounce jig head with a uh, Leland Lures crawfish. Now, I bought a bunch of these a couple years ago, the crawfish lures, and I have not really used them, and they're just taking up a lot of space. So I'm sure it'll work, but really I would also just like to go through some of these lures, make some space in my tackle box, it's gonna be hard to fish this thing because if you just kind of look around, tons of weeds, tons of algae all over the place. So it's gonna take a lot of precision casting into these holes. And then I don't have a lot of room to work in the holes, but let's see what we can pull out of here. There we go. We had some blow ups there on top water. I don't know what those are. Hopefully peacocks are large mouths. So I made a cast over there and on the drop something hit it. It's a, it's a pretty nice one I'd say. Not sure what it is yet. He's trying to go into those weeds. Let's try to not let him. Alrighty. Let's get this thing in. What is this? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a peacock first fish of the day alrighty so yeah as I was kind of just reeling my lure and I saw a little commotion off to the side on top water so I guess it was maybe one or a couple of these guys ambushing some sort of little bait fish on top made a cast and this thing hit my lure on the way down so about five minutes in we got our first fish of the day nice little peacock bass on the light power Sancor avid panfish Something hit it right there at the weeds. There we go, another peacock. Let's get him in. Alrighty, peacock number two. This one is way darker. I like the darker looking peacocks a little bit better. I think the colors look better when they're darker like this. Again, just jigging this jig head straight up and down right at the edge of these little weeds right here. Got a little hit from that guy. So sweet catch, let's keep going. Got him. Smaller, what is this? Oh, a little large mouth. Alrighty, so third fish of the day is our first large mouth, or I guess Florida bass. Uh, recently there was a research paper, and by recently I mean probably about a year ago at this point, a uh, research paper that came out that kind of, I'd say at least in my opinion, officially split these guys from their northern counterparts. So I've been I've been treating these guys as a separate species compared to the northern largemouth bass for a while now. So that's going to be our first, uh, I guess, Florida bass. So 
So I can usually pick up some fish over here. It's just right now, even though I did pick up two fish, right now it's tough because there's so many grasses and they extend out pretty far. Normally they're a lot closer to shore and it's easier for me to work uh, the, the weed lines, the edges of them a little bit. But right now it's tough because on almost every cast, even when I'm a little bit farther out where I don't even see any weeds, I usually end up getting snagged on some of the weeds like this. And then it's a, I mean, there's no way you're going to get a fish now, so then it's a challenge to get your lure back and whatnot. I haven't lost any lures yet. I think that's going to be a little bit of a testament to the setup that I went with today, which is one of the reasons why I chose this. But on every cast, I end up pulling in almost always at least a little bit of vegetation. And look at this. Like, and then, of course, when you do this, all the fish that were over there are, are scared away. So each season presents its own challenges. And uh, late summer fishing, this is the challenge. Not to mention all the weather you got to deal with. Because it is hot, muggy, and just really, really miserable out here. So let's clear this, uh, this lure off with all this algae and whatnot. Let's keep moving around. Let's try to avoid a little bit of vegetation somehow and get another fish or two. The wind here is not making this easy. I came over to the other side to try to get the wind to work with me. But when you're fishing lighter, lighter gear, the wind's gonna blow it all over the place. Got him. Solid little Mayan. On an ultralight, there should be a great fight. But on this light power, really not much of a challenge let's get him on in here alrighty my encyclid number one of the day nice little change of pace nice little variety I usually don't like these guys just because they are very annoying but they always put up a great fight if you ever want to challenge your gear come down to South Florida fish for some Mayans with some ultra light gear and you'll have a blast let's keep going I'll try to get one more fish here before we call it a day more fish right here did he bite he bit first cast oh he's in the weeds Let's see if we can still get this guy out of here with this slightly heavier gear than I normally would use here and the fish is off that's unfortunate but he was a smart one he went in the weeds don't think I mentioned it either but I switched over to a little uh, Euro tackle swim bait just to try something else we were doing okay with that crawfish but Wanted to try something else out, but that guy outsmarted me. Let's get one more somewhere. Oh, just got hit. think that's going to be a mine. On an ultralight I probably would have no shot. On this I've got probably a fairly small shot because this is going to be a big fish. And we've got a lot, a lot of thick grasses and whatnot to work through to get this thing in. Come on. Yeah, he's, he swam down deep. He picked up a whole bunch of weeds and grasses with him. If I'm going to catch this thing, I'm going to have to muscle it in. And if I muscle it in, I might break off here because, I mean, I'm, I'm pulling a lot, a lot, a lot of weight. 
with this. Ooh, that's that's close to breaking right there. I don't even know if the fish is still on or not. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and muscle this thing in. If I break off, I break off. Hopefully not. Is the fish still on? Yeah, let's just go ahead and see what happens here. The bad thing is there's all these lily pads on the side and lily pads are usually pretty strong. So if he wrapped himself up in a pad or two, it's gonna be even tougher. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gaining any ground. It's just, right now I'm just trying not to snap my line here. Come on. Oh, oh, it gave a little bit. I think the fish is still on. Get, okay, okay, okay. That was really close to breaking there. <laughs> Look at all these weeds that I am pulling in with it. But the fish is still on. Alright, somewhere under that giant pile of grasses and weeds and whatnot, we've got a fish. So let me clear all this out and let's see what we got. All right, well, we got him. <laughs> this is a really good sized mine cichlid. Uh, this is toward the, the, uh, the higher end of how big these guys get. I've caught bigger, they get bigger, but this is a really good sized one. Even on the light power avid panfish, this guy put up almost more of a fight than I could have handled, almost. And especially, there we go, especially through all these thick weeds with anything lighter than what I was using here. We definitely would have lost that guy but i think on that note we can uh call it a day and let's go ahead and let's wrap it up all right guys so that's gonna do it what a very difficult and tiring day it wasn't really difficult i guess very tiring it is hot humid and mucky and nasty out here a lot of bugs and whatnot but I am really happy I pulled out the light power st. Croix avid panfish rod today now if you've been a long time watcher of my channel you'll know that I absolutely love ultralight fishing I love all these little fish feeling like monsters on ultralight rods extra ultralight rods two and three pound test and whatnot but every once in a while you've got to upsize it and these fish felt really good on this light powered rod. If I was fishing an ultralight, uh, they would have felt even better, but I would have lost a whole lot more than just, just the one that I did. So sometimes you gotta adjust, even though ultralight fishing is great, sometimes you gotta go with the light power rod, especially in these kinds of conditions. Now, if I was fishing a boat in some open water, ultralight all the way, because you don't really have to worry about all these weed and structure and whatnot as much as you do when you're fishing from shore really like this rod definitely recommend it especially when you're fishing either areas like this or some bigger panfish or maybe like a nice crappie rod or something like that but yeah on the little uh, crawfish we ended up with two peacocks and a largemouth over on the euro tackle swim bait we ended up hooking three mayans and catching two of those so not a bad day for roughly about an hour of fishing maybe a little bit more might have been out here like an hour and 10 minutes or so but yeah hope you guys liked it and i will see you guys next time